Hello there, this is November 8th, 2022, and I have a question from Roanoke, Texas. This question is kind of a general question. Can a demonic person or demonic spirit um, uh, disturb the sleep of a believer? Or can they invade uh, on a believer's life in a way that there can be physical manifestations? That kind of a question. All right, so let me, uh, let me read through this a little bit. Um, it starts with the first time I had fallen asleep and during my sleep I was awakened but not like normal the best thing I can relate to uh, relate it to was like a seizure which I have never experienced in the health sense but I was passing in and out of being awake and asleep the reason I know this was because of my sound maker in one short instance, I could hear it, and then I couldn't, and then I could again. This repeated for several times, but it's as if I had no control over my body. But whatever was affecting me had no control over my spirit. I was able to communicate with myself and pray and simply ask the question, Jesus? And in this instance, it stopped, and I had awakened. I didn't think much of this, but then it happened again. The second time was similar to the first, but a bit different. I had fallen asleep, and later I thought I had awakened looking at the side of my bed and nightstand. When I tried to move to get out of bed, I could not do so, and apparently my brain could no longer distinguish if I was awake or asleep. At that point, the seizure to just trying to, trying to pick a word, uh, started again, and I was in and out of being awake and asleep. This time, however, there was a sound, a musical pitch instead of hearing my sound maker. I don't think I could ever forget that tone. It was high, then low, then high again, but only two pitches, which sounded something similar to a, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this word, I think it's digeri, dig, uh, I don't know, it's, it, this, this word, okay. Uh, it was not pleasant. It was unsettling for several days afterward. Even then, it didn't seem to affect my spirit, but only my physical body. I was so unsettled and became so agitated that I reminded uh, whoever was doing this in my room that they were doing it to the Lord's child. Since then, I have not had a nightmare. All right. Now, of course, I am not um, going to try to pretend like I'm the person who can say that this was or this was not a demonic encounter. I'm, I'm not going to try to pretend that I have some kind of special authority or insight so that I can issue a judgment and say yes or no. Uh, that I'm not, I'm not gonna, gonna, going to even try to do in these kinds of questions at all. Uh, but what I can suggest is maybe probabilities. You know, I can suggest probabilities just kind of out of my own personal opinion. Um, I, have, I have experienced myself, I have experienced circumstances that I believe the probability is exceptionally high that those were demonic experiences when I was sleeping. And so, I, you know, I, I would say that because I have had uh, some experiences myself, you know, I can name two, uh, very clear, very vivid in terms of what happened, uh, what I did. You know, in one circumstance, it was definitely while I was completely asleep and I awoke and it was a very disturbing encounter. I don't recall if I prayed or if I did anything specific besides just feeling quite disturbed in that particular situation. But in my opinion, uh, the evidence that I had uh, convinced me that yes, this was a demonic spirit that uh, invaded my person in a way that was unacceptable. Uh, I don't think that there was any kind of possession, you know, to that kind of degree. I wouldn't say that at all, uh, but that there was some physical interaction that they were able to take place. They were able to invade my mind to a certain extent. Uh, this was quite profound, and I know this. there were some other circumstances that were going on that would kind of justify, not to say that it's okay, but, but to explain, give an explanation as to why I might be a target at that particular moment. So I can, I, can, I can testify of my own experience that I 
as a believer have had interactions with uh, demonic spirits. That was one occasion. Another occasion was when one entered into my room and I woke up. Uh, it's, it's similar to any, it was similar to anybody else entering into the room, you know. Uh, I don't know if, if, if you uh, can sense when someone enters into your own personal private space. Uh, you know, if somebody's in there who uh, you don't know, who's kind of a foreign person, uh, perhaps you can relate to this, that maybe you can sense that there is someone in the room that shouldn't be there. This is what I experienced. It obviously wasn't a physical person, and so that only leaves some kind of a demonic being. And so I experienced that. Now, this time I got really aggressive, and I just spoke out directly, and I demanded that the, whoever it was, that they get out, that they leave, and I declared that I had the authority in the name of Jesus to, to tell them to get lost. And, uh, and then uh, I expressed a quick prayer, prayer to the Lord and asked him to send a few angels to, uh, to set guard, and then I just went back to sleep. You know, and that was the end of it. Uh, to me, it was not really an event worth mentioning. I think this is probably the first time I've ever mentioned this. And this was maybe this was like 30 years ago. You know, I mean, it's a long time. Uh, so maybe even a little bit. No, this is about 30 years ago. Yeah. So so I um, I can testify these kinds of things taking place with a reasonable degree of probability. You know, I can say that. But I can't prove that, and all I can say is, is that in, in my own spirit, uh, I have enough to convince me that there was some kind of interaction that was taking place in this way. All right, now what you have described, it could easily be some kind of medical issue. It may not be demonic at all. It could be. There is no way that I can answer that kind of a question. And unless this kind of thing um, goes on repeatedly, uh, I, would, I would expect that a physician would, um, would not know, you know necessarily what to do with that. So, um, so if it was me, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't bother going to ask a physician to do an evaluation until it was repeating, until it was happening uh, on kind of a regular basis. But a one or two time event, uh, that's kind of hard to that's kind of hard to work with. Uh, in the meantime, you know, you always want to do what you can to improve your physical health, and and I would certainly encourage that. However, there are two things that you mention here that that could suggest that this was a demonic encounter. You know, the first thing is in the, in the first experience, you called out to you called out to the Lord Jesus, and when this happened, um, uh, it stopped and you woke up. Uh, when you know when you called upon the name of Jesus, if if there was a demonic spirit involved and they just decided to stop because you called on Jesus, this would give me the sense that this demon is not is not necessarily going to be that much of a problem. All right, and I mean that in the sense that uh, it obviously didn't want any kind of a conflict. And just the suggestion that maybe it might have one, uh, it appears that it just decided to get out. You know, that, that appears to be the case. And then maybe came back. Uh, this, this is not um, what I would expect of a demonic spirit who uh, would be of significant influence or, um, or have a lot of experience or, or even be... Uh, very capable, you know. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that this is, you know, this is a, this is a serious demon who's like, you know, really serious about what he's doing. Sounds to me like you got, you got a spirit, if there is one, who probably was just kind of bored and was in the neighborhood and just decided to pick on you. Um, you know, that that's what it, it appears would be the case. Except that it happened again, you know. Now, with that happening again. Mm, you know, I don't know. I mean, what's what's this spirit really thinking? What, what, if, if there is one, what what would it be thinking? But you said it happened again, and then uh, this time, the next time, um, what did you do? Then you reminded them that that you were you were uh, the Lord's child, and that they 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 shouldn't be that. They they shouldn't be, shouldn't shouldn't be there. They shouldn't be doing that. Um, so in, in speaking to them directly, then you asserted your 
identity as a child of God and, and informed them that they had no right to be there in that sense, that you belonged to somebody else. For this spirit to depart, and if, if this doesn't ever happen again, then I think you have an indication that you probably had just some weak spirit who was bored or didn't know what to do themselves. Um, and uh, you let them know that, hey, you know, we're going to have a conflict over this. So get out, you know, go, go bother somebody else, I suppose, but not me. So that's, uh, you know, that, that, those two indications that there was a change that took place when you called upon Jesus and then when you demanded that the Spirit depart because you could see that there was a reasonably measurable change. For these two reasons, I would say, you know, the probability is quite high that you did have a demonic encounter. How high? I, I don't know, maybe 70, 75 percent, you know. Um, but again, you know, I'm not the one who is who's supposed to uh, make these decisions about the validity or, or whether it's not valid. What I can do is I can say that these things do happen. It sounds like this is a high probability. I can say that. Um, but regardless of that, what I really want to say in, in answering this question is that when there is an interaction that takes place, when something like this may happen, definitely call upon the Lord. All right. Definitely assert yourself as a child of God and that you belong to the living God, that you are not theirs to play around with. And definitely pray to the Lord and ask him to send some angels. It appears that, you know, in this kind of a situation, there, there, were, there were perhaps no angels around. Maybe they just figured that you were going to be just fine. They didn't think that there was going to be an issue. So you should remind the Lord that uh, it appears that there's a demon who's decided to bother you and that he should send some angels in order to address this issue so you can go to sleep, you know. I mean, you can get your rest. You can do the things that he needs you to do. You shouldn't be disturbed by things like this and ask him to intervene and send some other spirits down that will definitely uh, set, you know, set a guard and take care of these problems uh, should some spirits decide to stop by and, you know, mess around with you, all right? So that's, uh, that's the best I can do with this kind of a question. I do hope that this helps. I'm, I'm answering it because, you know, like I said, I've experienced it. I've known lots of people who've experienced it. And this is an opportunity for me to, to give those um, things that you can do uh, in the event that something like this happens to you or that you can suggest to someone else. Uh, should uh, should uh, anybody have any more questions for me or should you have any questions for me, do send them to me by email to my personal email address, aaron at aaronbudgen.net. And I hope this helps. Thanks.